that first machine made me $225 a month, and my goal was to make $2,500 a month, or about 10 or 12 machines, so that I could leave my full-time job. Because I knew it only took about 10 to 20 hours to fill up those 10 or 12 machines, and I knew that I could spend the other 40 or 50 hours a week, which most entrepreneurs work about 70 or 80 hours a week, um, and I can scale my business. So I kind of did that first, that was my first goal. So I think part of being an entrepreneur is setting goals, and financial goals, and once you meet them, it unlocks more opportunity, right? Hey, Dr. Bill here. Without further ado, uh, I am going to introduce you to my friend Gianni Del Vecchio. Did I say that right? Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio, okay. close enough. Um, he's in the ATM business. You guys know what ATM machines are, those uh, cash machines, right? Well, he has built a business out of this. He's been doing this for the last 11 years. He actually started the business with a $5,000 loan. That's it. And he's grown it into a multi-million dollar business and he'll tell us how he did that. Um, he now has 650 plus ATM machines. The newest one will hopefully be in my building downstairs in the pharmacy. And it generates over a million dollars a year in revenue. Um, he's also developed proprietary ATM software and he'll talk to you about that and he speaks out on industry panels for ATM stuff. Um, he has bought, sold, or brokered the sale of over 10 ATM portfolios, combined value of $20 million in the U.S. Uh, Gianni is also co-founder of LiquidClear, a proprietary mobile banking software that combines cardless ATM withdrawals, P2P payments like Venmo, and LiquidClear Visa prepaid card, and you'll have to explain what all that means. Gianni, thank you hey, for coming. Thanks for having me, Phil. So, <clears throat> why ATM? Like, what inspired you to say, this is a business, I'm going to get in the ATM world? Well, I was always inspired by residual income businesses, right? So businesses where you can you know, spend a small or even a medium amount of effort to set up that would residually pay you um, a commission or an income. So what I did when I first learned about the opportunity of owning your own ATMs, I went door to door looking for a business that would allow me to put my ATM in. And so I might have had to go to maybe 10 or 15 merchants until I finally convinced one to let me put my ATM in. So I closed the deal one time. It only took one signature and one contract. And once that contract was in place, it allowed me to keep my machine there and basically collect fees from people that were using it and pay me a residual income. It's also residual income for the merchant. Right, so let's talk about that. So why would somebody want an ATM machine? Okay, let's say you're a barber shop, right? and you have clients coming in and they're getting their hair cut. Well, a lot of those clients don't have credit cards or aren't gonna write a check. They wanna just pay with cash, but they don't have cash. So having an ATM machine is there. Or they may have credit cards or they may write a check, but they want a tip in cash, which happens a lot, especially when, you're, when you valet park and things like that. So people need cash and they don't have cash. So any place where you see a need for needing cash is a great place for an ATM machine. And we're gonna give you a really cool offer at the end of this. So like if you introduce us to a business that actually gets an ATM machine, you could make some money too, right? Yes, and we're gonna donate profits and proceeds from those ATMs to Leap, which is great so it keeps it in the family and keeps benefiting other students. Yeah, and also explain to them, like, where is money being made on the whole ATM thing? Because, you know, yes, you have an ATM machine, the ATM machine is sitting in a pharmacy or a store, but who's actually making money from that? And approximately what are they making per transaction, per month, per? Yeah, so this, uh, the average ATM fee, I think, in America is anywhere between $2.50 and $4. So let's say you're in a hotel, you're at the Ritz-Carlton, or you're at the JW Marriott in downtown LA. Uh, there's, there's two, actually two ATMs in there. They're not mine, it's in other companies. But, you know, somebody goes there staying at the hotel, they need cash, they want to tip the valet, the bellman, 
or they're travelers. Most time people traveling, which is why airports are good as well, um, and places where like museums and people where tourists go are good places for cash for machines. Um, they'll go in there and they'll say, okay, I want to withdraw $200. The ATM is going to pop up a screen that says, yes, we will give you the $200 um, as long as you're okay paying this convenience fee. So there's a, the average, let's say that machine was charging $3. Well, that person would put in their card, put in their PIN number, select $200. They would click yes to paying that $3 fee. And then our server and our software would check it with the bank to make sure the money's there. And if it is, and they get a confirmation, the machine will be then told to dispense the $200. It will take $200 and the $3 out from their account. Those $3 will go back to the operator of that ATM machine's account. And that will be basically the profit for that transaction. Now, that fee normally gets split up between the location where the machine is. Uh, you might have a business partner that's giving you cash or interest and you, some of that money needs to go to pay the machine, but that's basically the revenue that you make. So an average machine uh, in my fleet does about 175 transactions a month. So a machine that, you know, does a three dollar fee where you're paying the merchant an average of a dollar could net about two dollars per transaction times 175 transactions is about 350 dollars in revenue a month so uh, but like i said i'd only have to do that sale one time and you can count on that to be pretty consistent because atms are not like cyclical as they are as some businesses are like uh, some businesses are busy in the summer some right. businesses are you know car washes don't make money when the when it's raining so you just have to kind of do the math and it become it becomes a numbers game you know so i think the important thing too then is also finding locations where people are going to do more transactions you know you can put an atm machine in a place where people don't need cash you don't make any money you know then you put it in you know a place that has a really high traffic flow where people are using it all the time and you can make more than $300 a month. You can make $1,000 a month if they use it three times more. Correct, and that was my exact thought. That first machine I got with my $5,000 loan, I bought it for 1,500 bucks, a used machine, and I, had, I put $3,000 in the machine, and then the other 500 bucks I spent to buy a color printer so I can make flyers, so I can go Brilliant. around and get more locations. But once that first machine made me $225 a month, and my goal was to make $2,500 a month or about 10 or 12 machines so that I could leave my full-time job because I knew it only took about 10 to 20 hours to fill up those 10 or 12 machines and I knew that I could spend the other 40 or 50 hours a week which most entrepreneurs work about 70 or 80 hours a week um, and I can scale my business so I kind of did that first that was my first goal so I think part of being an entrepreneur is setting goals and financial goals and once you meet them it unlocks more opportunity right so right now you have 650 plus machines going, right? Yes. And they're in what areas? Mostly Southern California, Orange County, San Diego, Los Angeles County. Uh, we're expanding into Las Vegas, Clark County. Uh, we've got some in San Francisco and the Bay Area. And, but we've got, uh, I've got other friends that are route operators across all 50 states, including Hawaii, um, where if I were actually able to find a location there, I could contract out somebody to service it locally. So, um, but yeah, we're, I'm a Southern California boy, grown and raised in Irvine, went to school right. in San Diego. And so that's kind of where I naturally started my footprint. So I know you developed a proprietary software. What's so special about your software for ATM machines? So what I thought was cool, cause I'm like, I'm a millennial, even though I'm almost 35, I'm still a millennial. So I grew up with cell phones. I grew up with Facebook. I'm the same age as Mark Zuckerberg, 1984 baby. Do you take your dog to work? Uh, I don't have one, but I, I would if I could. And then you're not really a millennial. Yes. Forget it. I know, you're right? a fake millennial. I'm a fake millennial. I'm yeah, a you don't I'm count. A <laughs> you're a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I thought it would be really cool because I knew Venmo when Venmo came out and PayPal. People use these apps to send money to each other, um, but there's no way to really withdraw cash out of those accounts unless you have like a PayPal card. And now Venmo's got a card, but then you still have to pay a fee. So what I thought would be cool, um, or you have to have your card, is if you could actually withdraw cash using just your phone, kind of like when you go and activate like a scooter, like a bird or a line bike. Right. You basically go up to the machine with our software, you scan a code and take a selfie. It's obviously grabbing your GPS and some other stuff to verify who you are. 
and it dispenses the cash like five times faster and, and right. it's also connected to an app where you can send and request money to your friends and it comes with a debit card so it's kind of like everything you would need in your banking system and what you use today in the 21st century in one simple place instead of having this app and that app and the other app and paying a fee so the app also shows you where the nearest ATMs are and so we're very excited to be launching that soon awesome yes um, so if you could kind of like wave a magic wand and say this is what I want my business to look like in five years what's that vision gonna look like well I've got a few different goals for that one I'd like to 5x the scale of the business I'd like to be five times as big as we are now and I mean not just so much in total number of machines but in revenue because you can have you know 10,000 machines but they don't make as many as much money as maybe 2,000 high performing machines so making sure every machine in the fleet is, is performing well at least 95% of them because you'll never guess correctly the first time you have to move the machines around sometimes to get in a good spot two would be for having the whole business running itself so that is going to require me to continue to enhance my systems do a better job delegating do a better job organizing the daily tasks because when you start off as an entrepreneur, you end up doing everything yourself. You know, I'm the mm -hmm. graphic designer, I'm the accountant, I'm the, right. <laughs> the cash loader, everything. So little by little, um, a good entrepreneur will learn how to delegate and trust their employees and their staff. And uh, But those employees and staff will only do as good of a job as the systems that you write. So I'm constantly spending half my day investing in those systems, and then the other half of the day, I'm investing in growing the business. So in five years, I hope the business is running itself. We hope to have five times the revenue, and we hope that Liquid Clear is a huge success and that those ATMs are all using the software, including other operators using the software. Yeah, that's awesome. A few things I want to talk about now are kind of you know off the radar and, and new. Number one, if you have access to a location that you think would be a really great place for an ATM machine, and you contact Gianni, and he's going to give you his contact info, we're going to set up a few ATMs around town that will actually give proceeds to LEAP. And this will help sponsor kids to go to the program. And you'll get a $300 finder's fee. So the best way to reach you is? It's uh, Gianni, G-I-A-N-N-I, -N -N at pacificprocessing.com, uh, Pacific like the ocean, processing, P-R-O-C-E-S-S-I-N-G, Gianni, again, like Gianni Versace, G-I-A-N-N-I, -N -N at Pacific, like the ocean, processing.com. Um, one of the things that excited me about meeting Gianni is that he's committed to helping LEAP raise money for scholarships for students. So anything that you can do to help us get ATM machines in the, L it doesn't even have to be in LA, in any area in the country where, you know, it would really be a good location, um, that will help raise money so students can go to the program. Types of locations that would be good. And, Go and for ATM. it. Okay, so obviously like barbershops, cash-only barbershops, nail salons, any cash-only restaurant, some really fan, like popular like hole-in-the-wall restaurants, they're cash-only because A, they've been that way forever and they try to keep their prices low. So a lot of famous restaurants are cash-only. Uh, gas stations, uh, convenience stores. Valet parking. Anywhere there's valet parking. Exactly. We can even put the machines outside. We can put them inside. We can build them into a wall. Um, hotels, yes. uh, really big apartment complexes, uh, fraternities, sororities, if they're large really campuses. popular. Yeah, large campuses. Uh, what else? Uh, did I mention gas stations? Gas stations. Um, uh, let's see here. Basically, oh, it's museums. Um, like, you know those pop-up museums where people like, yeah. it's like the Museum of Ice Cream or whatever? Some of those are cash only and some of, and they actually have a lot of foot traffic. So, but there's a lot of tourists going there too. So, any, and any store that really just takes cash and a lot of them do these days is a great location. Yeah, bars, restaurants, nightclubs. The other ones, just like, I actually did a lot of my sales where I was actually the consumer and I needed cash and I was looking around and I was like, light bulb one and went off and I said okay hold on let me go talk to the nearest vendor or merchant All right because that it also just being the consumer that's like the best you know is stumbling upon these opportunities but then ex executing on them so all right yeah. so one last time if they need to reach you spell it out Gianni G-I-A 
N N I at PacificProcessing.com or PacificATMs.com. They both go to me. It's easier to spell ATMs. All right, Dr. Bill, over and out. Thanks a lot, guys.